Good morning. <laughs> oh, there I felt energy there. Thank you. Glad everyone has made it this morning. I want to welcome your fellowship. Um, just a few announcements before we begin. You should find one of these black pew pads in your pew. If you could please sign in, let us know you're here. Any information you may have that has changed, uh, cell phone number, cell phone number, email address. Um, thank you, Jim. <laughs> if you have a new alias you're using, let us know here. Uh, we'll get it into the uh, system and um, we'll have everything squared away there. Also, let me remind you again, if you have something going on, surgery or another event, write it down here. I would really appreciate that. I always want to keep up with everyone, but usually by the time I get to lunch, I'm trying to balance about 15 or 20 things in my head. And I remember you were having surgery for something, knee or shoulder or whatever, and I have a hard time getting the details, but write it here and we'll keep it all straight. So this is very useful. And um, fruit, let me give you an update on all the cans of fruit we have raised. This is amazing. We have some over here too. Our goal was 400 cans of fruit. And I thought, that's a big one. We'll see how we do. Ready for this one? Can you do a drum roll? Oh, good enough. The grand total is 468. How about that? 468 cans of fruit. So, so my good, that is amazing. They'll be here right after the service. And that door, they always bring a truck because they know it's always going to be worth their while coming. I just announced, we have to do it all over again. <laughs> okay, and hit it again. Here we go. 469. Thank you, Carl. So, so, and it's not too late, so go ahead and keep bringing that. Um, but they'll be here right after the service. If you are able, we could use your help. Uh, we got some boxes over here, ready to get them boxed up and take them all into the truck. So, uh, Plenty of food to bring in, so that would be a great, great thing for us. And um, that addresses a real need. That's something I appreciate, our church embracing uh, this ministry uh, to raise food for the food pantry. Um, it does all kinds of things to me. I read in the newspaper that people are hungry in the valley. We always want to think we got to take care of Africa. I, well, wait a minute. We've got some needs right here uh, just in our backyard, and um, we're addressing those things. So great work, church. Uh, to give priorities down. Next month, here's our next um, goal that we've got, our food item. It's Thanksgiving next month, November. And uh, I talked to, we talked to Jesse down at the food pantry. Uh, they've had businesses, very generous. They're donating turkeys for people. So they have turkey for the dinner on Thanksgiving Day. Jesse said, they have nothing to go with the turkey. So we're just going to do the fixins. Okay, so fixins, that would be uh, dressing uh, what, mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce, cranberry, what else? Pardon? Pumpkins, okay. Pizza, did someone say pizza? Okay. <laughs> Pie filling, <laughs> all these things. Uh, we'll collect all those. And um, we're thinking about doing a two-part food raising for the next, for November and December, because December they're having a, a similar matter with Christmas. Uh, they don't have turkeys donated yet. They said they'll have something, but they need things to go with these, uh, to go with these special offerings. So this is a great thing for our church to step up. Jesse at the food bank said he wanted to be able to give a box to people, and in the box would be a turkey and everything else to make it a good Thanksgiving meal. Um, so next month, we'll be doing fixings. We'll be collecting that. And let me see, working through. Oh, Tuesday starts up something new in our church. Very excited about this. Julie Character is heading this up. Uh, we're calling it Church Keepers. And we've met already and uh, got a list put together of all those special needs that have to be done. We do have custodial service, cleaning everything well. But we have all those extras, like uh, taking care of the woodwork, some fine details. Uh, Julie's got a whole list. If you can come and help, we'd appreciate it. We're starting this coming Tuesday at 9 o'clock. So just come out whenever you can, put on some work clothes. Uh, we have things to do around the church to get everything fixed up, inside and out. So we'll make it a big work day. Their goal is to do that about once every four, five, six month, or weeks. Uh, just have a rally coming together. So, um, so that'll be starting up Tuesday. We appreciate your help. Um, something else about those, if you've ever been involved in a work day, it is fun. 
you meet new people working together on things and you know getting the projects done. So uh, it's a great way to meet friends too and deepen our friendship. And uh, let me see, we have some um, visitors with us this morning. Bryce, glad you are here. So Bryce, we're glad to have you. <laughs> This is Nancy Reichardt's husband, Bryce Reichardt. So glad you're here. You're a pilot. I mean, you've been flying around the world. Uh, Ruth, I have to get a hold of Ruth. Her husband's a pilot, too, her Glenn. So you might have some things in common with this family. So but we're very glad to have you with us. And uh, Dale and Barb Warman. That's you all back there. <laughs> it says here you're from Kansas. Where's your Royals? caps and Royals gear. I figured <laughs> you got them under your shirt. Okay, well, <laughs> we're glad to have you in worship with us this morning. Okay, are there any other announcements? We do have one more. Dr. Roy is going to lead us in an announcement. Is there anything else we need to bring out? There's nothing else. Dr. Roy, come on up. A little showmanship this morning. See if I can figure out how to put this on. It doesn't really go with the choir garb too well, but maybe you can see it. And that's to symbolize the regional assembly that was held uh, down in Tucson yesterday. And uh, Carl McBride and uh, Jackie went, and uh, Grace and I went. So we represented the church. We had a great time. At the banquet, I uh, sat, Grace and I sat at a table with our Latino brothers and sisters. So that was very special. Um, so I'm wearing the name badge, and the ribbon says I'm a minister. And that leads me uh, more toward the second thing I want to say, that this is Ministerial Appreciation Day. And uh, while there are several of us uh, in the ministry, uh, of course, the most important one to honor today is Dr. Steve. So I hope you're all planning to do that. I uh, kind of got honored in as much as we are put on here how many years we've been in ministry. And when I sat down and figured it out, there was one fellow that had more. I only had 60. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Roy. I told Dr. Roy when everyone asked me how long I've been in ministry, I just instinctively say, too long. <laughs> but no, there's a joy in the ministry that's very appreciated. I wonder if we could just do that. Chuck, we have you, Chuck Babcock's with us. Will all the retired ministers please stand up? We'll just give you a little recognition here. All of our retired ministers and current ministers stand up. Thank you. <laughs> our, <laughs> okay. This is Chuck Babcock, by the way. When I started ministry in Indiana, you were the, on the regional staff back then. So I remember that. So, <laughs> Yeah, it was just a few years ago, I think. Yeah. <laughs> we're glad to have you in worship with us this morning. Ah, breathe. Can we take just a few moments? You've come here today for very important business, just to meet with God, just to be in his presence and to realize what a blessing that is, that God is here with us and his presence is readily available to you to bring you healing and wisdom, to bring you vision and courage and all these special things that you need in life, that you're looking for, and that God is very generous in giving these things to his people. Let's just take a moment and just prepare ourselves to worship our Lord and recognize his presence with us. Open the eyes of my heart.
All who are able, please rise for the opening ceremony. <clears throat> Life is a journey with others. We travel as a people on a winding road. We share our lives, our experiences, our hopes, our fears. With joy and hope, we welcome our travelers. We share our lives. We learn from each other. We laugh. Life is a series of hellos and goodbyes. These are those who arrive to be with us, those who are moved ahead of us beyond death. Both and go, we celebrate God's goodness. We affirm the Spirit's presence in the journey and in the home. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, it's great to be in church today. What a beautiful day together in worship. As we wait for the sermon in our joy journey with the uh, mission of the church, we join together as we follow the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. promises God gives us when we give our lives and hearts to him is that someday we will reign with him in heaven. Doesn't that make you happy to know that we will be secure and have the love of God around us continually? So join me as we sing today. Soon and very soon we are born to Soon and very soon Oh, my God. 
Ben Patterson, I like to read his stories. He's always got a very good point he brings up. And he shared a, a confession, a real blunder he made in his life once. It was that busy time of the year. He's a pastor, and he had an invitation to come to a Christmas party. And he thought, oh, good, I appreciate that. And then he marked it on his calendar and then just proceeded with his busyness. The day came, and he noted on the calendar that that'd be a nice thing to end his day, going to the Christmas party with friends. And then after, he was busy all day, and then he thought, oh yeah, I better get something to eat before I go to the party. They're going to have punch and finger food and such. So he went to one of my favorite, I've been there in a long time, rallies. Have you ever eat at rallies? Hammer, any of you? You know what that's like. Uh, they have the cholesterol special there. It's called a double cheeseburger with bacon. They have onion rings, fried onion rings they put into the burger. And um, you can order with French fries that come with a grease dip, and you can, you know, take all that in. Really good stuff. Ben got that meal, put it down. Just as the indigestion was starting to kick in, he got to the party, walked in, and he realized something he forgot to do. Read the invitation. He walked into a banquet. Had prime rib with horseradish sauce, salad, twice baked potato, all of these different appetizers, shrimp cocktail, dessert. They had eclairs and pedophores, and it was incredible. And Ben is walking in the midst of all this thinking, this is terrible. I can't enjoy this. I got filled up on all that junk food that I'll be paying for it all night, and I cannot enjoy this beautiful banquet that has been prepared. And the next morning, Ben woke up and just still felt terrible about how that worked out. And during his devotions time, he was journaling that out and praying about it and said, Lord, how could I have been so stupid to miss out on something so wonderful in favor of this cheap food that I ate? And he thought, I wonder how many of us do that with our heavenly blessings. We have been invited to the most glorious banquet. And our Lord calls us to enjoy this and to prepare. And what have we done? We filled up on the junk food of the worldly living that we can't appreciate it. And we missed the joy of what our Lord has prepared for us. We've spoiled it with too many worldly things that truly do not satisfy. In the book of Revelation, our Lord brings the words to us. Hallelujah for our Lord God Almighty. He reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory for the wedding of the Lamb has come. I love this kind of language. His bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. And then the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb received your invitation yet? <laughs> it's here today. Won't you take it? When we come to our time of communion, it's just a little foretaste of some of the glory that's yet to come. In communion, we find our appetizers, if I might carry that imagery out a little further, to be able to take these glorious emblems into ourselves, realizing this broken loaf represents Jesus' own body and this cup represents His own blood that He willingly sacrifices on our behalf. As we partake of these emblems this morning, let us do so with appreciative and humble hearts, grateful for what our Lord has provided for us. Our communion hymn is, There's Something About That Name. It's a short song. We'll be singing it through twice. But my, the message is so powerful. There's really something about the name of Jesus that brings healing to that deepest part of my soul. Let us prepare for communion with our Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
such a busy time in Jerusalem that night that Jesus met with his disciples. But he pulled them away from the crowd into the upper room where he wanted to spend a few moments with them. Moments just before he was to be betrayed and, and handed off to his own passion toward the cross. But he took that time to teach his disciples what the sacrifice of his life would mean. He took the bread that was at the table and he broke it before them. And he teaches us that this broken loaf has a new meaning. It represents his own body that is broken there upon the cross of Calvary. And Jesus took a cup of the fruit of the vine. And he taught his disciples that this cup represents his own blood that is shed for us there upon the cross of Calvary. It's there at Calvary. Everything is atoned for. Everything is taken care of. It's there we find our salvation. It's there we find our confidence to come before God without need for fear, no anxiety, but to know we are loved, to know we are called into his family, and we are his beloved children. As we partake of these emblems, let us do so humbly, realizing the great price that has been paid, that we might experience the loving forgiveness of our Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather around this table in deep humility, fully aware that this symbolizes your Son, our Savior Jesus, life, death, and resurrection. The bread, his broken body. The wine, his blood. This is all we know or need to know. We share these emblems to give us strength for the week and hope for tomorrow. Amen.
Halloween is this week. When I was a little kid, that just meant the world to me to get ready. We'd have trick-or-treat night, we'd have beggar's night, then we'd have pre-beggar's night. We just stretched it out all that we could. I read an article of the National Retail Foundation. This is amazing. Do you have any idea how much we Americans spend on Halloween? $7.4 billion just on Halloween. Adults spend $1.4 billion on costumes. Children, $1.1 billion. And on behalf of dogs and cats everywhere, let me report this next figure, $350 million to dress up our pets. They would really just assume you skip that. A treat would be fine. They can move on from all of that. But it's a big spending occasion. It gets our economy going, and it's great fun. Various holidays we have in our year. Christmas is number one, biggest, biggest spending holiday. $602 billion just on Christmas gifts. Number two holiday. I didn't even know this was a holiday. It slipped in on me. Back to school. Did you know that was a holiday? That's considered a holiday now. $72.5 billion. And this next one, the third most biggest spending holiday. Okay, any moms in the crowd? Okay. Mother's Day, number three, $19.9 billion. And they could do better, right? They could do better on this one, moms. So all the things we spend, it's all fun. It's all in good cheer, having a good time. Might consider it frivolous on many occasions. But the offering that we bring to our God must never be a frivolous offering. It never should be a second thought or spare change we might have. But honorable giving. To be able to come and say, Lord, I'm bringing this to you. The creator of this universe. The one who holds the salvation of my soul. I bring you a special gift and offering. May it truly honor your heart and honor who you are. Our offering this morning, let it be a true, genuine reflection of our heart for what our Lord God has provided for us. Our Heavenly Father, we come giving thanks for your promise of a new heaven and new earth. However, in the here and now, we come with our tithes and offerings to your altar to be used to further the spreading of your word to those who do not know you. 
We also bring to your altar the gifts of food to be given for the brothers and sisters less fortunate than we who bring these gifts. We ask that you now bless these gifts and the givers. In your name we pray. Amen. out of a time of very intentional praying, just spending moments with God. I want to bring you up to date on just a few of our prayer concerns. We do want to pray for uh, the food we've collected that those that get this will realize it was brought together by God's people, people that love God and love people in this world, and that God's blessing will be with these. We also want to pray for um, a few others. Carol Knight has one more week of chemotherapy and radiation treatments. Uh, very exhausting, really fatigues her, uh, but her spirit's strong very strong, so she's an inspiration to talk with. I want to continue to pray for Bonnie Tigner's grandson, just a two-year-old baby. Uh, just issues, very frustrating. They can't get to the root of this. He's ill, has trouble. He's home now, hooked up to a number of heart monitors, and um, they're thinking it might be the heart issue, but they're still working on this. And uh, Tom Coons, uh, he and Chris come to both services. They kind of fluctuate a bit. And um, Tom has been ill, just abdomen issues for the last two months. And just hard to get around if, if you've ever dealt with things like that. Don't want to get into health care issues, but just wouldn't get it diagnosed. And they finally got it narrowed down. It's probably the gallbladder. And I was thinking, well, the pain is right by the gallbladder. That'd be a fair... Anyway, let me close that door again before I go any further with it. Um, but they're going to diagnose it this week. And at this point, they said they're hoping they'll just schedule surgery and get this done. Uh, so remember Tom Coons in your prayer. Uh, just a lot of pain uh, trying to get this worked out. We also want to pray for our ministers, um, retired ministers especially. God, remind them, especially today, everything you've done has been important. Planted many seeds, and those seeds have taken a very important hold on many hearts through your lifetime. I want to take a moment just to be quiet, to be still before God. It's your opportunity. It's a conversation that you need to have. And just talk with God. Be mindful He loves you very much and loves to be in contact with you. Lord Most High, you truly are mighty, truly amazing, wonderful. Father, we go so quickly through life, we forget to pay attention. And forgive us those times, Lord, when we truly don't take you into full consideration to realize how wonderful it is, the many things you do for us, the many ways that you provide, the strength that you supply, the faith, the courage, the new vision, the, the wisdom, guidance and many things. Thank you for being there, O oh God. Teach us to rely upon you more and more. For here is where we find our real strength, our real faith, our real trust, Lord, is knowing you as our Lord. And how wonderful that is, O oh God. Father, we lift up to you concerns we have. I pray you be with this young baby, Jade. Watch over this child. We pray for his healing to bring his body into wholeness and that all involved will see that it's your care that steps in here. Be with Carol Knight as she's down to the final week of her chemo and radiation treatments. Come to her. Remind her every day this week that she's almost there and that you're with her. Remind her of your care. Pray for Tom Coons and just dealing with this pain. Father, we pray that the doctors can get this diagnosed and be very specific and get him on a path of resolving this. And Lord, be with him and Chris both. Remind him you're there for them. We pray for the food that we have collected, Father, that it will be distributed to very needy homes. It will fill some hungry stomachs. 
And the people taking this food will realize it's been brought forward by people of, of you, Lord, of your family. People that love you and people that love your people and people that love all those in this world. Let your spirit be upon every can, every container, that it bears the message of your love and care. Be with our ministers, our retired ministers. Remind them that everything they've done has been important. That they've planted seeds, so many seeds. And they've seen some of those seeds grow and many more that they didn't get a chance to see the, the final result. But remind them, give them that comfort that it's all been good. It's all been important. And you've taken those seeds and applied them in many ways. And there is great fruit from every action of love, every act of care, every step of reaching out in your name, that it's all been worth it. Father, again, we praise you, O oh God. We worship you. We magnify your name over all of this world. To you and you alone do we lift our praise and our worship. And truly it is a blessing to us to praise your holy name. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.